Hi, my name is Ben Dai, and I'm the director for our latest Overwatch short, Shooting Star. And hello, I am Jake Patton, the editor for the short. From the beginning, when we were conceiving the story, uh, Jeff Kaplan came to us and wanted us to tell the story of D.Va that no one else know about. It's, it's the, the other side of D.Va that, that only a few people know. We spent a lot of time because she's uh, one of the, you know, most well-known characters from the game. She has a very distinct attitude and behavior in the game. And we wanted to preserve that, but we were trying to show a side of her that wasn't front and center to the public eye. I think that was probably the hardest thing to do, was to find the right balance between Diva's casual attitude versus her public Abs image. Absolutely. I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of it come from the actress as well. Um, she spent a lot of time doing game line, so she had this very unique sound to D.Va when, when we were playing her, but then we, we asked her to sort of take it down a little notch and then maybe actually, you know, uh, play her as like a normal person a little bit more. Uh, she actually pulled it off really well because um, she just went in and, and started to really relate to the character, who she is as a real, you know, it's a real girl, you know. The uh, flashback scene, um, for me, it really works as like sort of a, a peek at what D.Va is carrying on her shoulders as as the hero of Busan and as the the, the main character of our piece and, and it's this conversation with Daehoon that she's sort of exposing what's that what that feels like and what she feels like she's going through and he's trying to be her, her friend and really um, sort of take some of that burden uh, but she's a little standoffish and then we get this this line from Daehoon that sort of sums up the whole show it's like don't be afraid to ask for help and you know, it's, it's a good life lesson in general, but for D.Va, that's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, um, the idea is that you can't do it alone. And, and sometimes even the best soldier needs Back up. help. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, that, I mean, that's the premise of the, the whole film, you know. So something that, that really resonated with me when I was growing up is watching anime and seeing some of those flying missiles um, um, streaking across the, the sky and I really want to recreate that feeling and watching some of the movie growing up in the 80s it has to do with airplane dogfights and stuff really inspire some of the some of these um, aerial combat sequences um, during production um, we have we have a, a stage after storyboard called Previs. Uh, one of our uh, Previs lead, Don Ta, he actually uh, took upon himself to sort of choreograph the sequence, uh, cutting footage from uh, live action and, and anime, uh, animation from different movies, sort of just yeah. did, did this like collage of imagery that's very, uh, pretty much uh, uh, dictate the, the whole aerial combat sequence. Yeah, it, it helped a lot. It was um, it was awesome. We were able to sort of get a lot of ideas from how things would move through, and you know, the speed at which you can cut a air combat scene <laughs> is interesting because there's there's not much to show. I mean, it's the vehicles and then the in interiors, but um, and over and we're over water, so it's even simpler. But that that reel uh, really helped me as as far as helping define find the right feel for the pacing of the action and, and still have our moments where we can stop down and have uh, moments like this where they're having a conversation, but you're still feeling the action, you're still feeling that there's jeopardy and danger. Yeah. It was great that he did that. And then from that uh, edit, we actually created the, the, the 3D animatic, what we call the pre -vis edit. Um, during that time, we actually, um, there's a big debate how, to, how we actually do the the aerial combat sequence in, in real 3D. Should we cheat every single shot so that they're not moving actual distance or should we actually do it the correct way? We end up doing it a very, pretty much the correct way with the exception of a few shots that we cheated. In order to do that, we have to sort of come up with the, the actual distance from, from where the Omnic shows up to the Busan city and then the, the, the Mecca base, which is situated right in the middle and how, how they interact with each other uh, in relationship to the base and the city. And you can see in the sequence that we try to make sure that every single shot where we're flying toward the city, we see the city in the background, and we situate the, the base where it's supposed to be so that you get, even though it's a really simple 
a, a location sort of uh, situation, you, it's very easy for the audience and, and for us to get lost and fig, forget which side we're facing. And then also the moon uh, plays a huge role because this whole direction. yeah because yeah. this entire show is lit by one technically yeah. one giant light source, <laughs> which is the moon. <laughs> it is practical. Yeah, so the, the punch and the pistol moment, when we were storyboarding these sequences, uh, one of the artists came up with these ideas and, and it was really fun. And at first I thought it was a little too much, but we kept it in there and then everyone liked it and people fall in love with that sequence. So it, it made it all the way to the end. Um, there's, there's some debate whether, you know, she should use her gun while driving her mech. How, what's the physicality of it? Is it even possible to, to stick her hand out? Um, but at the end, I, I thought we, we executed pretty nicely. We took great care in preserve everything from the game. The models are um, pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to the game model with, with higher resolution. Um, the sound, our um, sound engineer did a really good job of incorporating game sound and you know jazz it up so that it, it feels like it belongs in the environment and when we mix it we really make sure that all these game sound show through so that we can actually hear it with all the other uh, background noises and there's a lot of um, animation detail paid attention to for diva because we have so many close-ups of her face so a lot of time went into the fine details to make her face look on model with the game with a little extra for cinematic needs and in especially scenes at the end where she's on her mech working and we get her long hair. Yeah, absolutely. If you notice, she actually went through different variations of her outfit. You know, she, when she starts, she had the hat on with her jacket and her suit underneath. And in her flashback sequence, uh, she had her makeup. And so basically she had the normal diva look in the game. But in our short, uh, we felt like it's kind of weird that she will have her makeup, so we removed that and then put her hair in a ponytail so it's more of a casual look because the Omnics caught her off guard. And then at the very end, we had another version without the hat, but hairs are down. So there's, there's a lot of work went into uh, making her look natural. Thank you very much for spending um, seven, and a, half seven and a half minutes with us, and uh, we'll see you next time.